Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today we're going to deal with F-clamp storage. I know a lot of you have a smaller shop, even smaller than mine, and so space is a premium, especially for clamps because they take up so much space. So the other day when I was filming a video here, it came to me like Doc Brown hitting his head on a toilet in Back to the Future. It was my great Scott moment. And I figured out how we can way more effectively store these clamps, getting the same amount of clamps on maybe half the amount of wall space. And so today, we're gonna do that on Bittner Built. So my great Scott moment was when we were doing this video where I was showing off how I do the Bessie clamps. And the Bessie clamps, the way that I staggered them, was that I have one set pointing at the wall and one set pointing at the person. And so my F-style clamps are sideways and one's going this way. Well, why can't we take one of the F-style clamps and instead of taking up this much space, rotate the clamp and put them very close together like this? Basically what, doing exactly what I did with the parallel clamps, but instead doing it sideways. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna make a new clamp rack for F-style clamps. I think we're going to be able to gain about 50% less space on the wall. So that would be a huge win, especially for all of us who have very confined space and not enough space to put our tools. Uh, so we're gonna build this all the way through. Obviously I have French cleat walls. You don't have to do French cleat. You can just straight up screw this to the wall or adapt it for your own purposes. Okay, so I've kind of laid everything out with some scraps. This isn't the, the final, but just trying to decide how exactly I should support everything because there's gonna be a lot of weight on here from a lot of clamps. So we're gonna look at things first. Uh, let's first do, we'll take these guys away. So we're first looking at this top clamp right here. And so this top clamp needs this piece right here to support it right at the back lip. And then it needs this big flat piece to support the pad. Now the pad sits down further than this. So this piece of wood will be a quarter of an inch higher than this piece of wood when we attach it to the board so that the clamp will stay straight and it won't go cockeyed when it comes out of there. Now for this piece, if I just glued and screwed this horizontal piece, it would be fine if you did two or three clamps, but I plan on having, you know, maybe six clamps out. And so the more pressure you get further out, it will eventually cause this to break off. So you need to have some vertically spaced pieces that support it because this has a lot of force this way in gripping power to support this piece right here. So at first I was thinking maybe I would just have this one right here and this is gonna take about 50% of the weight and hopefully this would maintain it. Um, then we did the same thing where we have the horizontal piece here and we have a piece that supports that one. And this looks fairly good, especially if I put two triangles here. So this one is definitely secure. It has its horizontal piece supported in two spots and it has the back of the clamp supported by this vertical but I definitely think we need to put in an additional piece right here, marrying them together. And so now this horizontal piece has two supports. This support, the pressure will transfer down into this one and into these two triangles. So if we marry it all together, it'll work out pretty well. All right, so I copied everything onto this board. I traced it all out and I did my measurements. I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the pieces now to attach here, but it makes it easier for assembling later. What I did was I also took a screenshot of this and at the end of this video, I'm gonna put it up in a cleaned up version. I'm also gonna put metric in there as well. Um, don't kill me if the metric's wrong. We got a lot of Aussies that, that watch this channel apparently, so I gotta make sure I'm taking care of you. And of course, very special Ukrainians too. So make sure you're out there checking my work, okay? Um, let's go ahead and cut all the pieces for this. All right, so I've cut all of my pieces. Sorry, this is a really awkward thing to be able to videotape. Um, so your vantage point is not that great, but I did make one change. And that change was that my divider piece right here, I decided to take this over to a half inch piece of wood 
Um, just to give that bottom clamp a little bit more space, I'm going to indicate that on the plans. If you don't want to do this, you know, maybe you only have quarter inch or three quarter inch material available to you um, at the time or scraps that you're just putting this together with. Uh, all you would need to do is extend the entire build over an additional quarter of an inch. So up to you on that one, but I did it just to give it a little bit more room. I don't want it to be very confining when I'm putting in the clamps. So I'm gonna go ahead, glue and screw, and we're gonna see what the final version looks like. So I'm almost done with my initial glue up. Uh, I made sure to use super glue and wood glue mixture when doing this because these are really awkward pieces. Um, and so I want it all to be locked in before I flip it over to drill and put in the screws. I wanted to stop and point this out for a second though. The triangles that I made have uh, different dimensions. They're longer on one side than the other. The longer side should be going to provide the bigger level of support for the structure and the shorter side is going to go onto the back plate. Before I put on this final piece over here on the side, which makes a very tight uh, tunnel, I want to make sure that I hit all of this side, make sure there's nothing sharp. I know our clamps are, are you know, durable, but eh, I want to take care of them. So I have everything glued together. As you can see, my crazy little mouse maze that we've made here for our clamps. Now what you wanna do, since everything is the exact same height, it's actually pretty stable to flip it up upside down like this. We really need to spend some time and put a decent amount of screws that are countersunk uh, into the back right here. What I would propose is completely redrawing the template on the back here. That way you know you're hitting everything spend some time. Uh, this is going to hold a lot of weight, so we want to make sure that we're adequately drilling and screwing into this. All we have left to do is to mount this unit. So we're all finished. It's sturdy. It's ready to go. If you're going to just screw it to the wall, I left room up at the top up here, so you can put two screws up here, you can put two screws at the bottom. If you're gonna mount it like I am onto French cleat, this is a lot of clamps in a really tight space. So you definitely wanna do two rungs of French cleats just to give it that added stability. So what I've done is I've already placed my top French cleat on, and then on a second French cleat, I've put double-sided sticky tape. So I'm going to place it onto my wall saying, okay, I gotta put it right here. I'm gonna slide the other cleat behind it as I pull out, get it right into place, and then push and lift off gently. And now you can see I have it exactly where it needs to go. I can then just mark it with a pencil, take it off, glue it, and screw it. It's all finished and it actually holds two more clamps than I thought it would. It holds an amazing 16 large F-style bar clamps. It held, you know, each one holds eight and I thought it was gonna hold seven, but it worked out, it holds eight. So I'm super excited by this. It does it in a nine inch wide frame compared to my 16 and a half inch wide frame up top. So I'm gonna put the schematics up on the screen in a minute, but first I wanted to tell you about my first ever giveaway. So. Um, you know, trying to grow the channel, so we're going to do a fun giveaway. It's not going to be anything huge. I don't have that big YouTube money yet, um, but it will be a fun tool that I like to use all the time. What the requirements are. Number one, you must be a subscriber. Number two, you're going to have to answer this question and put your answer down in the comments. Number three is we have to get up to 100 comments before I will select a winner, and I'll select a winner from the people who answer my question correctly. My question is, if you've watched any of my videos, things are usually the same. So what is weird and different? Maybe it's about me, maybe it's about something in my background, but it's something that you see right here, right now, something is off. And I'll give you a hint, it's something small. So that tells you that the weird thing is not my face, because my face is big. 
it's something very small. Um, so if you put down in the comments what you think it is and you pick right, then once we hit 100 comments down there, I will pick a winner. I will mail you out this cool little tool and I will announce it at the end of whatever video I'm filming at that time. Hopefully it's the next video and you guys do it really quick. Um, but I'm excited to do some sort of cool giveaway like that. So as always, stay safe in the shop and I will see you in the next video.